on that note, I know that you guys were going to share some stories tonight about just sort of like you guys, you know, in a room making a really cool project uh, back in the day. Um, but before we do that, I know we're still waiting for some people to filter in. Um, so if you guys are already on here, hello, welcome. Um, make sure you're kind of poking your friends to, to come hang out. Um, I know some people are watching live on Facebook, but if you're seeing the live stream, you can come hang out on Zoom. It's more fun. And there's just more people, you know, we can say hi. Um, but I wanted to start by saying hello and welcome to the Bay Area Legends live stream. Um, my name is Parker. I'm part of the Battle to Beat Cancer team, and I'm going to be hanging out with you guys today, just kind of being a bit of a moderator. I'm going to hang out in the background most of the time, but Jason did tell me that uh, this conversation might get derailed a few times, so um, I have been instructed to uh, keep Jason in check mostly. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, so basically uh, what the Battle to Beat Cancer is, um, is this massive string of events that just keeps expanding. It's this online campaign that we're doing to raise funds for the Lewin Fund to fight women's cancer. Um, the Lewin Fund is doing amazing work um, to battle cancer. And what they're doing is they're focusing on programs that specialize in quality of life improvements um, and prevent uh, preventative strategies for both uh, women with cancer, their families, their communities. Um, and they're also investing in innovative research that focuses on that improving quality of life piece as well as um, bringing us closer to finding treatments and cures, which is all really important uh, work and stuff that we're really excited about. And um, I just wanted to thank you three for, for joining us and for helping us with the cause. Um, and so uh, with that, I wanted to just, um, before we stop sharing the screen and let you guys uh, hang out and just chat throughout the night, um, like I said, uh, tonight's event is sponsored by Battle to Beat Cancer um, and uh, the Lewin Fund. So if you guys want to go ahead and donate tonight, uh, go to justgiving.com slash I am talent. Uh, and you'll see that these guys are listed on there. You guys can go ahead and donate and we'll let you guys know how that's going um, throughout the night. Um, there's a few links. We'll share this throughout the night. Um, and we'll put the link in the chat periodically for you guys to go check out what's going on there. Um, but yeah, so with all that out of the way, um, hopefully more people will be joining us. Um, but how about you guys just kind of go in and do some introductions and talk about how you three know each other and the work that you guys have done together. So Ryan and I have like a, a, a very long history from being in uh, the same band at one point, uh, but not playing together. Um, and uh, you know, just ended up staying in touch all these years and, and doing things on and off. Uh, and is, uh, you know, a great host and, and lets me stay in his guest room when I'm uh, in Southern California and puts up with all my shit. Uh, so we, it's, it, it, you know, it's, it's a very, very, very long friendship that was, that was kind of forged over a weird situation, but uh, one that, you know, became very beneficial for me to, to have a good friend. Yeah, I think it was awesome, man. I mean, at, at, a, at a certain point, I saw you like every day for six, seven hours a day for a few months, right? I mean, yeah. or for even a few months. It was like um, six months to eight months. A year, actually. Yeah, more like well, almost a year and just con condensed, you know, here and there, but a, a hell of a lot of time, let's say. And um, we just hit, I mean, I hit it off with you. I always thought you were super cool. Are you frozen? Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, I always thought you were super funny and cool and talented and badass and uh, knew more about gear and stuff than I did. And um, it's just cool having you around. It was good energy. And actually, you, you got you made a lot of, uh, you know, this is making the first Survive Blind record. And you, you had a lot of good input on that record. And I mean, I think I remember you showing up to a uh, rehearsal, you and Eric, Valentine. Yep. And just and doing the thing where the producer thing where you guys both sat back and like I'm doing right now, yeah. All right, play for us, like that kind of thing. And we Yeah, exactly. And and we played some jams and um have you ever thought about yada yada da 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 da, you know, just, just the input, good input and good observations and um, you know, that was cool. But I always just we, we hit it off. So yeah, there you go. And and you were just around the whole time we were making that record. Um yep. And so that's, that's how I knew you. And I am glad we kept in, seems like we kept in touch a little more than uh, maybe, I don't know how, how much the, some of the other guys in the band yeah, possibly, I don't know. Yeah, All right. <laughs> and yeah, there you go. And, and it, it was cool. Yeah. So um, that's how we met. 
Yeah, and so um, this this I seventy six project was kind of done during that that time. Uh, there was just this kind of uh, downtime where there was no money coming in. Uh, but Ryan and I had met each other, and uh, I got I was doing video game soundtracks, um, you know, in between making records, and uh, needed to put together a band and you know, got in touch with the Ryan and was like, who are the baddest dudes? You know, like, can we line something up? And will you be the music director and, and put this stuff together? Because I was working on a couple other projects and, and really didn't have time to do it. And Orion, Orion like handled like, you know, putting all the songs together, putting the band together, rehearsing the band, so on and so forth. And it ended up being a, a very incredible recording, like in, in one of the highest budgets and, and well-regarded uh, video game soundtracks that's happened. It, it was really, really cool. Um, and, and met Dave through Orion. Yeah. At that point. Which, yeah, I, I, so I, I remember it. No, go ahead, go ahead, bro. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Well, I just I just remember that um there was it was like you came to me and said hey I, I got this uh, my friend of mine works at Activision they're yep. they're trying to they're they're doing a game that the soundtrack they want uh, 70s funk uh, sort of like Dirty Harry Lalo Schifrin like Lalo Schifrin uh, soundtrack um, you know cop show TV cop show stuff and and then you knew that I was playing in the in the cover band Curveball yes uh, they, uh, Jason. And I, and I feel like I, my memory is like part of the whole thing was predicated on, we want Brain to play drums. Do you, do you know Brain? Do you have his number? And can you get him to do it? I feel like that was part of it. That very much could have been the case. I, I, and I, so I wasn't, I, I didn't really have a choice of the drummer, but like, Dave, Dave didn't you, didn't you play some, did you play some shows with Curveball ever? I think you got, I think you were the one responsible for me getting in there. You were the yeah, one responsible. Yeah, yeah. I'm just getting in. You it was your, your fault. It's all your yeah. fault. It's my fault. No, no. It's your so fault. I did like three they gigs. Find the baddest dudes. They asked. Yeah, but you. Oh, curveball. Yeah, you did right. Like I did three shows, so there you go. and then, so that's then, then maybe was. then you guys broke up. I think it was my fault because I joined. You know, so for a minute. Of course, yeah, of course. It's my so, fault. So that's what it was. It was like a. J yeah, Jason said to get the baddest dudes. You were the funkiest, baddest uh, dude, uh, you know, uh, um, that I knew. And it was Les Harris. Yes. Right? Yeah, who was the super good. bad at horns. Les, was... Les ended up playing on some Smash Mouth stuff, too, uh, through mm -hmm. that, just, just from doing that gig. Sup yeah. Yeah. Totally that was bad. it. I think I just got a call brain. He was down. Dave Schul, Dave was down. Uh, Les Harris on all the horns was down. Uh, I think maybe, maybe, maybe somebody else played trumpet that Eric knew, possibly. And then you guys got Tom Coster to play keys. Yeah. And some uh, percussionist that I don't know. I can't remember. It was, it was, was it John Bendish? Eric that you guys knew. Well, was it John was, Bendish? Bendish played on some of it, and then it was some of the same. I don't think so. Oh. Yeah, that came in and did overdubs. Okay. Uh, but that that we did that part in Redwood City, and that. And by the way, I, I just want to just just before I forget, I knew Dave primarily Dave Shul because he played in maybe the baddest band on the whole scene, straight up like uh, Los Angelitos, which is if you go back and use uh, Google and you watch YouTube of Los Angelitos playing, it's possible that was the baddest live band on that whole like sort of funk music scene in the in the bay area period wow really i mean it was just okay. I yeah, never i've watched man i've watched some of those dude i've watched i mean i went to a lot of shows because i was i was uh, right. going out with janet the singer janet adams right. the lovely and talented that's how we met that's janet how we adams. met and um right. that's how we met yes so that's how we met that's how i met dave tweedy and and uh, yeah, that man, that band, you guys, you guys were just, whoo, just crazy. So that's, anyway, that's, that's a big but part of Dave Show. We did not play together yeah. ever, really, up until I did a few curveball gigs. We never played together prior to that. Right. right. So anyway, yeah. thanks, thanks for the no. call. For the so that was exciting. So, thank you. Well, it, you know. Yeah, man. I knew you were badass. Well, that shit worked out great, man. 
it, it's always circular. You know, when, when I was leaving Third Eye Blind, I said, you know, it, it's either House or this dude, Ryan Salazar, that I never met, but played in Fungo Mungo and was bad as hell. Which was uh, a badass group, too. Yeah. yeah. And so it just kind of goes around in circles, you know? Thank you. Like, it, it, yeah. it, it's just that thing. It's oh, like, yeah. The Bay Area Music scene? Yeah, you just, oh, you, just see, you just see those cats, and, and when you're ready to do whatever you're going to do and you got to recommend somebody, you know, you know who to, who to call, basically. Uh, you know, it, it's small enough, but it's big enough, uh, the, the, that whole scene. Uh, that, that and it's also – the, Who the badass is. And it's, it's also, like, and not just, like, with – it's not even with, like, uh, like segmented with, like, the – sort of punk R&B bands and then the punk rock bands and then the, this band, everybody knew each other. Everybody yeah, knew. Most, I mean, I know I knew a lot of cats from like uh, Tim, Tim from Rancid and this and that. And it's just, we just came up since the late eighties, right? You knew a lot of these people because you saw them yeah. around. All the everyone, time. everyone went to each other's shows. Right? Everyone went to each other's shows and just like, every, yes. yeah, it was a beautiful thing. Yeah. 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 It was a beautiful thing, man. It's very different now. I'll just oh, say yeah. that. You know, like like finding a finding somebody that's a true motherfucker on an instrument, you know, that we already don't know. Ah. Um, they are out there. Yeah, but, there's a lot of them, but they yeah, don't have the hang there, like man. we have, man. I mean, it's a thing. It's a whole different mindset. Yeah, it really yeah. is. It's not about you know, like it wasn't about self back then. It was about trying to make the band sound good. And it seems like most people are trying to build a name. And there might not be a YouTube channel or some shit instead of just right. making a band sound great. Right. It's a different, it's a different game. It was maybe there's not as much of a nurturing club scene now, maybe, right. you know, well, obviously now there isn't anything, but even like before COVID uh, it's possible that, and it's just that, you know, exponentially bigger. Yeah. It's a different thing, whole different game. I, I think, I think it's just the, intent, yeah. you know, I, I never thought I'd make a dime off music. You know, it was just shit that I did. Oh, yeah. You know, like, you're right. That's a good point. And, and I think now it's like, you we know, didn't roll. Want, attention, want money. You know, I, I could be right. I, I could I certainly, I didn't do that either. I don't remember thinking. Yeah, I, I don't remember thinking like, man, I'm, I'm doing this so I can be famous and this and that. Of course, we, you sort of, in the back of your mind, you're, hoping something like that is going to happen, but you never really, man, I had, that's no, not, you don't, you know, yeah. that's not the sort of main goal. I, I had, I had no, uh, even aspirations to be that, you know, it was like, I didn't even think it was a possibility that, you know, I would, I would play outside of the Bay area ever. Uh, and, and so when it happened, it was like far out, like that was the accomplishment. It wasn't the money, you know, I pissed the money off real quick. Uh, you know, but, but getting to like, see the world and do things uh was was really heavy you know every time that i got to go somewhere do a tour it was like wow i'm really getting to do this uh you know as opposed to i could stack some money off this <laughs> I, I really like that you guys are bringing that up because like i was telling jason earlier like i teach communications and i have a lot of students who are like I want to be YouTube famous or I want to be TikTok famous, right? And like, you know, generations upon generations, we see the people that we look up to, whether it's musicians or bands or, you know, now it's influencers. And like, I think the people who really get into it, like for most of us, it's like, it's not just about the famous part, right? It's about the music. It's about the art, right? So like for you three, like, can you talk a little bit about like what really drove you to get into just to do what you guys do. When you start, Dave, <laughs> Dave Shul. Well, you know, watching American Bandstand and all those other shows, you know, all these late night TV shows, and you just wanted to be them. And then listen to the records, Dave Letterman. like in the bear, K D I A K Soul, because I'm a funkster, like the R and B. You know, I I I just wanted to groove all night, and you know, and, and just. And, and then just getting a comp, just playing with other folks, that was like a natural high. And it hasn't stopped, mm -hmm. you know, it's still continuing. When you play with other musician and that groove is happening, there's, there's nothing better, you know. Mm -hmm. And the hang. And mm -hmm. a lot of it is, is the hang, you know, you, you just gotta be hanging around. <laughs> that's, that's, I don't care how bad you are. 
if you if you don't have the hang, it's not working. Yeah, it ain't working. No matter how bad you are. I think, yeah, I think that's true. That's like all universal truth still, right? Like you can be the baddest dude, but you have to have it here and be able to hang and be a cool dude, cool person. Right. I think. Yeah. I, I, but um, know. yeah, that late night talk show thing was. Go ahead, man. No, no, no. The late night talk show thing. What's that? Just real quick, you're talking about watching America, watching TV. Remember oh, the oh late you know, like Johnny show? Carson I'm and seeing sure all the bands that's, play. That's all... Oh, you know, like watching Johnny Carson, all the late night, you know, David Letterman yeah. shows late at night and watching all the bands play. Man, that was my favorite. That's, yeah. And, you know, that's what drove me to play. Me too. For me and a lot of, and a lot of cats from my generation, like uh, the most dangerous band, Paul Schaefer, Will Lee, the original Steve Jordan, and before uh, the cat, Sid McGinnis, was Iron Bullock. Iron Bullock. That band, man, Iron was, that band was so inspirational. And the, so like Questlove and what he's doing, I mean, he's the sort of equivalent now. I think maybe he grew right. up on that too. And hope, and I'm pretty sure he's inspiring kids the same way that band did for us, like Will Lee and all that. So that was important, man. I just remember yeah. that, you know, that was a big deal for us when I was first playing. Right, and I know you played on those shows, you know, and you got to meet those cats. I mean, so did I. And they were I just, played on those shows. Yeah, so I did know, I. I and, and you know, they're the coolest cats too. You know, just humble. You yeah. know. Oh, uh, super cool, super humble, musical man, um, sweet. Was that right. cool or what to be able to meet those cats after that? Growing up and being like fifteen years, fourteen years old, watching that—that's just. And all the records. You know, I got. They I got a bass uh, with Will Lee's. Yeah. Nice. Exactly. Nice. I got a bass signed by Willie. I still got it. I look at it all the time and just, yeah, every time I play it, it's, just, it's still there. It's signature from 1997s. Ah. Uh, What's that? You said, how come you haven't showed me it, homie? You know? I don't get to play the Willie. Oh, yeah. I don't know. You can, I'll, I'll bust it out in a minute. I'm about to have emotion. Sure, I'll, I'll get it now. You guys can go on with your thing. But speaking of signatures, right, remember we were going out in L.A. No, we'll get Van there. We'll get there. Oh, that's a, that's, he that's he a, signed my guitar. Oh, yeah. and we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. What? Oh, look at that. There's oh, Willie. Fancy, fancy motherfucker. I don't know if you can see it, but. It's a blur, but I see it. I see still there. So wait a minute, Van. That, that's a good story, that Van Halen story. Yeah, we'll get there because we still haven't hit I-7. The Van Halen story. That's the bomb story. Oh, okay. Well, that, I'm, I'm sorry. Right, I opened so it. I'm oh. sorry. Maybe I digress. I actually told you guys part of the story because, yeah. you know, I, I'm trying to keep friends here. Um, <laughs> and I know Dave still uh -oh. is pissed off uh -oh. about a cigar. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, for me, the music thing, I started off playing upright bass. And then uh, I heard uh, Sly Stone's Fresh album. <laughs> And I sold oh, yeah. the upright bass and bought an electric. And, and that, that just did it for me. From like that point on, I was just cruising, trying to do things. And then, you know, discovered all the metal stuff that was happening, you know, and started figuring out how to write songs, kind of. Uh, but, uh, I mean, that was the big thing. But like all those guys you were talking about, all those late night dudes were probably the best players in the world. You know, like, like none of... Mm -hmm. I, I can't think of too many guys like like Hiram was was no joke uh, as a guitar player. That dude was just killing mm -hmm. every night. It, it had a big influence on me. And there was one other dude, um, Stevie Salas. I don't know if Stevie you remember Salas. him, yeah. guitar player dude. But, oh yeah, Stevie Salas, man. Yeah. I played on a, I played on a Stevie Salas record. Oh, you did? Oh, you did? Believe it or not, yeah. Far out, like yeah, I did. And, and not only that, we were in the, uh, we were in the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, what is it called? The Matrix. Remember in the second Matrix, there's a band? Yeah. In the, in the cave scene and everybody's playing drums and I'm in there and Stevie Salas is what? one of those dudes. Far out. He was the dude that, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> he was the dude that convinced me that brown people could play rock music and be accepted. So he had a solo record that came out because it had been a minute, you know, it had been since like Hendrix and some other stuff since somebody actually came through and played like real rock music that was brown. Uh, I think I had that record. I think yeah, I had that record. It was called Color Code. Yes, and yes, it yes. Cool, man. It was cool. He killed it on that thing. And from that point on, I was like, oh, I could do this too, probably, you know, like, 
there, there really isn't a limitation because back then it was very different. You know, like if you didn't have long hair, you couldn't play metal. <laughs> it, it, it was not going down. It, it was just a different universe. Uh, yeah, but that was a trip. So let's, let's get on to I-76. So we uh, started doing rehearsals in Oakland somewhere that Orion lined up. I don't remember where probably, it was. Probably Soundwave. No, it was some warehouse. It, would, it was probably some, Soundwave. It could have been. It could have been. Oh, okay. Um, and yeah, actually, I don't remember. Yeah, you had done all this pre-production, so you kind of just put all these yeah. songs together, and then and then you know, we all got in a room, and uh, you know, I sat around and do what I do, give my damn opinion, uh, and that's it. And you guys killed it. You just like had it together. I remember thinking we were going to have to do like a couple weeks of pre-production to get this done. And I think it was three or four days uh, that we ended up doing and it was just tight. And then we went to LA. I know I stayed somewhere different than you guys did. Um, and, and I don't remember much, you know, I'll bet uh, the producer suite, huh? Yeah, that was, that was a time. Uh, the producer suite no i wasn't actually a producer suite it was just you know i was doing, no, just i was doing a lot of things and eric was always sour with me for doing a lot of things uh because mm. <laughs> he was super square back then uh and so i think everyone else stayed somewhere and i stayed somewhere else uh and that studio was incredible yeah royal tone royal tone yeah that was like royal tone studios man that was the spot. Um, Linda Perry bought it as a songwriting thing, and then uh, you know just for her own stuff. And then I think it got sold because um, last time I tried to book it, um, I couldn't get anybody on the phone. So, uh, and that was a couple years ago. Uh, but that studio was really, really incredible. It was a famous old studio, right? Um, yeah, it was like a famous old it was studio. I'm not sure what it was before it was called Royal Tone, but but one of the better sounding rooms I've worked in with some of the most amazing equipment. Um, that I remember, you know, Eric was super impressed with it and we got amazing tones. Um, one of the funniest things that I remember. I feel, I feel like they told. They told you what? Go ahead. Oh, I said. What, I one feel of, like somebody said like Sinatra recorded here. It could it yeah. could be true. Who knows? Those LA studios, you know, all have histories and have changed names a hundred yeah. times. Um, the funniest thing I remember from that session, um, a person that will go unnamed, had to have his own television while he was cutting tracks, and wow. needed specifically porno movies to watch uh, from Rocco Sofredi. And I had to go out and ask like the one, one runner chick to go out and rent Rocco's Sofredi pornos uh, so that we could get this stuff recorded. <laughs> I and I, I got the craziest look of all times. So I was like, I'm very, very serious. This needs to happen. But she was like, so you, I have to go out and rent pornos starring this dude so that you can get your record done and there needs to be a TV set up so this dude can watch. It's like, yeah. During our session. It, yes, it's like, that's exactly what I'm saying. I totally forgot about that, man. Yeah, I remember. Hey, yeah. I, think <laughs> you even bought, I think you even bought hats, I know bro. what you're talking about. <laughs> you even bought hats. Totally hilarious. Like one of the funniest situations ever. To have, have like a total badass musician come up to you and go like, hey man, so. I need a television set up next to me. I need um, pornos with Rocco Sofredi starring in them, or I'm not going to be able to pull this off. <laughs> Usually someone's asking for blow or something, you know? <laughs> it, it was pure comedy. I was dying. <laughs> That's an eccentric dude that we're talking about. <laughs> right? He should out remain unnamed. <laughs> it wasn't me. Yeah, it's it, it was none of us, though. It was a great That's idea. Right. It wasn't I, me I either. Wish I'd come up with it. <laughs> I, I really do. 
uh, and, and then, you know, I, I just remember things like moving a lot faster than we thought they were going to move. So we were able to kind of do more overdubs and get cooler sounds than we thought we were going to be able to get. And I, I think a lot of that is the reason that that soundtrack is still out there and rolling. It's, you know, it's legendary in the video, in the PC world uh, as a soundtrack. And, and I, I think, that, you know, a lot of that is, is Orion's arrangements and, and uh, you know, just the way that thing ended up sounding and everybody's fucking badass performances. It, it, it's still rolling. I mean, I, I, went, on, I went on YouTube oh. uh, yesterday. Yes. And there's hundreds, hundreds of clips up. And more, more than not, a lot of them are people who relearned your bass parts. And, and, you know, just start playing. That's cool. Yeah, it, it's really cool, man. You've got to check it out if you haven't. Because it's, it's, to me, I, I was happy for you. I, I was watching it and going like, yeah, they're respecting my boy's game. He did a real solid job on that. It, 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 it's really cool. Yeah, man, Thanks, I, had a conversation, I had a conversation with uh, Jason a couple of days ago about this, about what we're doing today. And he goes, yeah, man, there's a whole bunch of shit on YouTube. I'm going, really? Cause I haven't heard this shit in a long, man, you know, a long time. And so I, I went on the, you know, YouTube mm -hmm. thing last night and it's like, whoa, it's like, and I'm reading comments, bro, everyone's loving your shit, Orion, man. That, great work on that, bro. I know that was so long and, ago, and, but yeah, and man, like, I mean, the, I'm, a lot of the comments are very like, recent. Yes, that too. I mean, 14 years ago to now there's comments and it's saying it just, it, it exposed people to, to funk music. I think it did. And they said, and it said, man, yeah, we it's were like, doing shit back then that Voltex doing now, you know? Oh yeah, exactly. It, yeah, it, that's it's true, wild. huh? It kind of is like that. And a, but a, most of it is the production, man. You guys came in and just had all the good ideas and the direction, and Eric Valentine, uh, and you, the 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 engineering and recording and tracking of that of that music is crazy like like uh period uh you know real like right on uh, vintage sounding stuff that that a lot of people have been trying to do since and are doing now and eric just nailed it man he went to town i remember uh snare drums with newspaper on them and yeah that was just all kind of cool thing. stuff all yeah so that i think that's the biggest part of it is how it sounds sonically is the cool stuff big part is the music and the players man hey i wasn't even uh, yeah. allowed to use my I wasn't even allowed to use my 1980 Strat. <laughs> it was too new. It's like, what? I like this thing. No, 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 no. They rented a whole bunch of gear, man. I remember that. I couldn't use any of my gear. Right. Really? Yeah. That must have been a me I, thing. I was on some ego shit. It, it has to be. I, I didn't like, care. I, I, think I, we, I, I think we rented. I think we rented some vintage stuff or something. That maybe. Oh yeah. That maybe you weren't super yeah. comfortable playing, but it sounded. Right no, I wasn't mad at all. At the end result, oh, yeah, it was amazing. Glad you were Glad killing it. it on all of it. All the vintage stuff brought brought the game, brought the whole thing up and elevated it. I think the whole thing was just done very well with a lot of love, and that's why people still dig it. And like, uh, just on a on a just a little side, late later down, the, like many years later, I still I had that. Uh, I had that uh, thing on CD, my own, I made my own version of it with the, just a compilation of some of the songs. It didn't have yeah, the dialogue the from the uh, video yeah. game. Yeah, the and, Bullmark. The Bullmark thing, and, and, I, and I gave it to some friends and family, and, and there was a woman named Marcy G, who was P-Funk, George Clinton's personal assistant. She was their tour manager. And she was somehow fell in with the Third Eye Blind uh, crew, and uh, we took a shine to me, and we hung out a bunch. and. Uh, I gave her a copy and said, yeah, if you want to give it to her. I gave her a copy for her, I think. She took it. She gave it to George Clinton. And then she got back to me and said, hello? Oh, uh -oh. I, I just got cut off with um, a, a, a lingerie uh, Johnson, uh, Washington uh, photo. Uh -huh. it, All it, right. it, it happens to the nah. best, you know? Every every. Everywhere I go, you know, I, I, I roll with some of this lingerie, you know, and just rock it because it's how I do. Mm -hmm. And with that, I think that would be uh, uh, my cue to, to put this train back on its track. <laughs> Jason.
<laughs> you warned me oh, that the lingerie, lingerie was. Lingerie? He warned me the lingerie would be waiting. Um, <laughs> the lingerie of my universe, you know. Um, I love that wow. you guys are. <laughs> um, I love that you guys kind of like got to look into like just the YouTube stuff and just see how far that project moved beyond you guys and that people are like really digging just some of the stuff that you guys made and like really paying tribute to that um, and seeing that, you know, something that you guys put together, had, you know, like has taken a life of its own kind of like beyond that original project. Um, and so just kind of like thinking about that and just like, I guess, you know, when you guys were first making that, you probably weren't thinking that, you know, 2020, you'd be looking at all these covers of, you know, this no. project you guys are making in 97, right? Um, so, like, are there any sort of other parts of, like, just the access of, like, covers and, like, YouTube and stuff like that that just, like, have changed the way that you see how you do music? Ugh, that's a tough one. Hey, just to finish my story so you guys know, George Clinton heard our sh shit, and I met him later, and he did. He had heard it, and he loved it, and he was playing it on the bus. So believe it or not, like George Clinton thought that was a bomb, and I just always thought that was a trip. Good. So shit. before you interrupted with your bullshit lingerie, whatever that was, <laughs> there you go. George Clinton was down with it. All right. Hey yeah. Ryan, could you send me that? If you got any. Yeah, of that? man. Of course. So so yeah, yeah I don't I don't know how to answer that that question Parker it's it, that's a weird one because like I, okay. I honestly like I don't really listen to anything new you okay. know like I'm I'm weird like that it, yeah it, uh it I just kind of do what I do and I hope people like it and if two mm -hmm. people do it was worth the time yeah um, but. Well, there are a few people in the chat asking for you guys to play something if you guys want to just start like messing around on whatever guitar bass you guys got laying around. So, ooh wee! Um, I got a busted hand, but I'll do my best. <laughs> All right, Ryan, Dave, you guys want to like start just goofing around and there guess people asking if you want to play something. I wasn't prepared for this. I'm, but... <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm very you know, prepared, but I, I'll, you know, whatever. You want to scat sing over something? I got a bass. Sure. The thing is. The, the, there's there's latency right so you can't actually groove with somebody but somebody can solo over something else maybe yeah we could just someone like, like Dave solo. Can solo over a bass or yeah 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 right what, if what i play you? an e i don't solo i'm a rhythm guitar player but let's see what happens all right all right i got a bass what do you got jason lingerie uh, uh, <laughs> i don't have an amp but i got um i got my noodle guitar uh that's always around you want me to just play an e I do. I do. Somebody, somebody. You guys hear that? Barely. Yeah, we can hear you. Barely? Hold on a sec. You got it? Is that you, Dave? Oh, that's no, no, that's not Dave. No, I got no amp, so I'm just. So somebody starts something in E. <laughs> we'll get it going. You Come on, that? funk man. No. No? Hold on. Turn it up. Turn you know, up. Rocco Prestia just passed away. Freedom, I know, man. I know. Hold on. Right? <laughs> I can barely hear you. I cannot hear you at all. This might be a disaster, but we had requests. Right. So you know what? <laughs> You're always fun. <laughs> at least everyone I've been in. Or Ryan, say something, because I want to make sure you're not muted. Well, maybe I'm muted. No, Got you're me? not. You're good. Let me turn this shit up. I can barely hear you. There you go. No? There you go. No, there you there go. There you go. It's going in and out. Yeah. This is going to be a shit show. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a shit show. Hey, man. 
That was a nice solo, bro, because I couldn't hear it. was solo, I couldn't hear it. Sure, I couldn't hear it, but you looked like you were doing work. Sound check. Yeah, it was pretty badass. I'm sorry you guys missed it. <laughs> that was the best thing you ever played? <laughs> There's a lot of space in your playing. It was the best thing I ever played, man. What's that? Less is more, sir. It was a lot of space in your playing. <laughs> You guys can't hear shit. Nope. This ain't yeah, it's turned out pretty loud. Maybe it's overloading the speaker. All right. Never mind. Oh, we can hear. Somebody said well, we can some hear. Some of us can hear. But we can't play together. That's the problem. Yeah. So maybe it's just going to be one no, of you guys at a time. Jason, Steph, is that the problem? <laughs> you hear that, Dave? Not really. I, I, I don't am, think it's going to work. I'm blind. Yeah. We can't jam together anyway because the timing's a little off, but I just figured if I played E, you could solo. OK. I can't hear what your one is, bro. Yeah, and you're not going to be able to play to my one. That's the problem is that I don't think we're, we're in time to, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, think we, I think we need to practice. Let's we, practice. We'll go practice, and then we'll come yeah, back. Yeah, OK, yeah. all right. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> Professional, <laughs> professionals at work. You know what? That's all right. We tried. We tried. You call me a professional <laughs> until today. <laughs> we failed. We failed. Big time. Oh, the intention was there, which is cool, you know. No. Yeah, really yeah, for team. sure. I believe. For sure. I don't know, I forget uh, a lot. Um, <laughs> uh, so the Eddie Van Halen story. We could get yeah, do it. That. <laughs> that, that's a good one. That, 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 was, that was quite comical. Uh, we were recording and we knew he was in the building and he came in and wanted to hear what we were doing. And I almost shit myself. I, I, I really was having emotional problems in that moment. Cause you know, like I, I had just barely, you know, taken one of his posters off my wall or something, you know, like a year earlier, like that dude was the hero. And, and he signed Dave's guitar, which was awesome. Actually, that was the only time Man. I ever saw you quiet when he was in the room. Yeah, I was scared. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was quite strange, but, but, you know, it was pretty intimidating. You know, I mean, when I heard him, do, do you remember how he came in? He just walked in. Do you remember how he came in the room? He walked in and he said, hey, what's going on here, everybody? And we all turned around and he goes, hey, how you doing? I'm Ed. Like, he's, you walk in and scream. Yeah, like and, I, and I had my back turned. I didn't know who it was. It was like somebody came in. <laughs> like he needed to introduce himself and then he uh right. he showed kelly how to play jump on the piano properly uh in the in the lobby and i was just sitting there watching and and tripping out and over a couple of days we became friends ish um you know did a couple little bags of racket together uh that nobody else knew about at the time uh and you know, ended up having lunch every day. What? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> nice. So we'd, we'd go outside and have lunch. And then he was wow. leaving to go on a tour or something. And he left cigars at the front desk. And I thought they were for me because, you know, the front desk chick handed them to me. Uh, and then, you know, took them home, whatever. And then shortly realized they were for all of us. But I was too embarrassed. <laughs> to come back and go like, hey, he left us all cigars. I, I smoked two of them already. So I got to short somebody. <laughs> so I never really brought We did brought smoke cigars, right? Oh, yeah, we did. did. We were, cigars? We, yeah, we were smoking cigars? Yeah, we were smoking his Cohibas. Uh, and then he was going on the road for, I don't know, some crazy amount of time. And just brought the rest of the box over and, and left it at the front desk for me. 
and then I, I, I realized, oh, he left them for all of us. <laughs> and I've been digging in. I've been digging into this pile something deep <laughs> already. So I owe the both of you. It's all good. I don't smoke cigars anyway. Okay, you will once I get you a Cohiba you, and we smoke. Yeah, and we, and we smoke in honor of Eddie. <laughs> but that, that, do, do, do you remember that he took us into the room to play yeah, us a mix heard of the, we heard one the first, like, random song? No, it was two songs, and they were two new songs uh -huh. for with DLR. A, a greatest a greatest hits record that. that um, was the first thing that he did with David Lee Roth and forever. That's right. Yeah, it was a trip. It that was, was a tiny little room. We all went into this tiny room and listened. Yeah. Into these that, songs. I was, like, hey, what I do was, you guys think? He's so cool. I, I was sneaking over to that room nonstop while you guys were working uh, and just hanging out because, you know. He's I'll bet. Anyway, what I remember was as soon as Eddie started bringing us to the room, I think, who was the engineer? Andy Johns or something like that? Was yeah. That right? Does that ring a bell? Yeah. We did the Zeppelin records. Oh, that's right. Was that low, man. Yeah, that was Andy Johns. Yeah. So as soon as you walk in there, he goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, Eddie, is that cool? Ah, oh, man, these guys are cool. Let them in here. Because he was I, really guarded. I, I, yeah, I just got to that point where it was just cool for me to walk in. You know, it would like right. walk in and he'd be like, hey, man. <laughs> and we sit down. I just didn't want to share my Eddie time with anybody because I'm a selfish ball player. You're Eddie blocking. <laughs> But anyway, anyway, but th there was one instrumental, and they were they didn't know who was going to sing on it. Remember? Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. But who ended up singing on it? I don't even. I, know, I don't so. think that that ever came out. Okay. I, I'm not sure that anything ever happened with that. Um, you know, like the the last time that that I saw him, he had come into our control room, and kind of congratulated everybody and said he loved what he was hearing. Um, and I went, you know, we, we, we went outside and did our normal thing and we're shooting the ship. And, uh, I was telling them about how, uh, you know, I was going through some relationship thing with some stripper situation and, and, uh, you know, how she tried to stab me and this, that, and the other. And she immediately called, like, it just went through the universe to her. She called and I was like, you're interrupting my Eddie Van Halen time. You're going to have to call back later on a time for this shit and hung up. And we just started talking about like historic chick nonsense uh, that we both went through. And then his wife called him and he was like, man, I, I got to go. She's real pissed off at me. Apparently I did something. Uh, <laughs> it took off. And I was just thinking to myself, man, we all go through the same shit. You know, <laughs> Eddie Van Halen goes through the same nonsense I go through. My broke ass that is barely doing anything and living in a recording studio. Uh, really, really hilarious. That, I think that, that's a really good time to sort of like, you know, mention kind of like why we're doing this today. Like you said, like, no matter who we are, we kind of all deal with the same shit, right? Like, you know, like so many of us have been affected by cancer, whether it's us or our families or <laughs> we love. Um, and so for those of you who have joined later, uh, these three guys are amazing and have just, you know, we're hanging out and we're just, you know, shooting the shit, whatever. But we're also here to uh, raise some funds for an amazing charity. Um, so we're going to we're going to put the uh, the link in the chat again um, if you want to help us raise money for Battle to Beat Cancer. Um, uh, but yeah, I think that's that's just so interesting that you're like, it's you know, same shit as Eddie Van Halen, you know, like still argue with our, our partners and go, oh, shit, I fucked up. And also, yeah, but, you know. But who's, whose life hasn't been touched by cancer in some way? Yeah. Right? Like, yeah, absolutely. Really like, it, it uh, you know, if, if ever there was a cause to do anything for or spend any time on, you know, mm -hmm. start here. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, I, I countless people in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know about you guys, uh, but no, yeah, like it's been heavy in my. I life. have some. Yeah, it 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 just kind of keeps going and going and going, and I think anything that anybody can do, they should. You know, there, there's it, who knows what tomorrow brings. You know, like I I would I would feel like an asshole if I didn't use whatever little bit of tiny influence I have in this universe to 
you know, not raise some awareness and end up with cancer tomorrow. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It, it, yeah. it really is that thing. And people don't put it in that context. You know, they don't, you know, it's like, I ain't got it. You know, and when when some famous actor or something gets any disease, it becomes the most important thing on earth. Uh, and, and so I think it's just got to come from the ground up uh, of, you know, supporting all this stuff. Some more research gets done and more help gets is available to people. My opinion, I don't know everything, but, you know. Absolutely. Um, I just pulled up the uh, the fundraising page, which I can share real quick. It looks like we've got ninety five dollars raised so far, um, so I can share that real quick so everybody can see how you we're doing. Energy bastards! Hit <laughs> <I'm> this. <laughs> so we got ninety five dollars. Uh, to be fair, this is our first event. This is our first event, so you know you guys are kicking it off. Um, but we've got. I think that's money. awesome. That's totally awesome. Yeah, yeah for sure. So if you guys want to go ahead and donate, uh, I'll, we'll see how much more we can bring in tonight. So yeah, I don't know. I'll throw something at it, you know. Okay. Come on, ninety-five bucks. I got. I know Robert. Robert's a friend of mine. Robert's a friend okay. of mine. Thank you. Robert. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, Robert. Good guy. Got... Good guy. Good. Good. Good stuff. And yeah, Robert, dope. And, and thank you much. Uh, we'll we'll keep it going. And, and you know. I'll, I'll throw something at it as well, just because okay. uh, we'll, yeah. we'll get it moving. You know, That's I, me I, as well. I ain't got much, but I got enough. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. I feel that. It, 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 it's, it's just, you know, it, it's great to be able to use the, the little bit of experience that, that we've had together to raise anything. Uh, and, and totally thankful for, for the opportunity to do that, I think. You know, like... We we all had blast together and just talking about having a blast and making a good recording and having anything show up. Uh, good enough. Yeah, twenty two years later or whatever it is, you know. Yeah, it's a while ago. Yeah, go mm. go go li go listen to some Interstate seventy six and then donate some money. <laughs> or let's do it again. You know, we'll do it. We we, we got to do it. We got to do a song or something together. Yeah. Ryan, what do you think, man? I'm, down, I'm super down. You, you know, there's, there is a video that I saw that's like, I think it's from Switzerland and it's a whole, it's a band with a, with a horn section and kind of a big band, like maybe a Los Angeles size band uh, doing a, a couple covers of that thing. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's a trip. They sound great. Uh, but yeah, I'd love to, man, anytime, you know, once, yeah, I mean, uh, I'd look, love look, to play music with you again for sure. I, I am I am more than willing to, to you know if you guys can record at home or whatever, and uh, you know I'll line it up and mix it and do all the stuff that needs to get done, and uh, you know if 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 it goes to charity, I'm in. Because I ain't got nothing but time, man, right now. So, you know, who who, who has <laughs> anything other than time right now? <laughs> I was gonna say I think now is like I think that's why we're so excited about like you know this campaign right now right like obviously like you know cancer fucking sucks right like but the fact that we've just like got time and we get the time to dedicate to like say hey like this is something we get to dedicate time to and the fact that we get to hang out with you guys and and to raise awareness and to raise money and yeah that'd be sick if you guys could just like chill and actually like just make something that'd be that'd be awesome I, I, I'm in, so, you know, you guys let me know. Um, so, Ryan, how did your session thing go yesterday? Uh, it was really cool. That's, and that's kind of, I mean, that, that ties into it. Um, so, Eric, Eric Valentine recorded that thing with, with you, with us. Yeah. Right? And uh, you know all this. We talked about, you know, more than I, but um, uh, – that was when Eric was still based in the Bay Area. We we went down here. We came down here to record Interstate 76. That was in 90, 1996. Yeah. Um, and so he opened up he opened up a recording studio sometime in early 2000 or the 2000s. And I I actually had never I think I, think I went to it's with Stevie Wonder's old studio. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that I went there before Eric got it. I think Third Eye Blind went in there and maybe checking it out. Just a couple of years, be a year before Eric got it. But um, anyway, yeah, the, I spent the last two days at at Eric Valentine's 
X until recently Eric Valentine's studio uh, tracking with this kid named Mr. Max that I think I was talking about earlier. Yep. And uh, it was it was super fun. Eric's got the still still all the killer old uh, you know vintage more even more like um, vintage gear there and and so but it was just really cool and kind of uh, like I was telling you before uh, to go back after uh, tracking with Eric at his, the hunk of shit studios that you guys shared where we made the first Sir I Blind record and then working with him at a sort of fancier studio here in LA right around that same time and you to, to go and check out his new fancy digs and spend yeah. a couple of days there walking around you know tracking and walking around and checking out how he, he has everything laid out it was cool it was just brought back the nostalgia of like oh yeah this is where Eric ended up and um it was good. So yeah, that's that's what I did uh, last couple of days was was is track this, base in uh, Stevie Wonder's old recording studio. And yeah, go ahead. Is this a project you're going to be involved in like long term, or is it just session work? Oh uh, no, actually, I mean, um, you know, it, it's uh, it's this this guy's band. Uh, actually, please check it out. Yeah, thank you, man. I'm not I'm not too I'm a little slow sometimes on the uptake, but um. Yeah, it's Mr. Max. I'm totally into it. I'm totally into the band. I'm totally into the project. I'm going to be playing live with them once we uh, start playing live again. We did we did a stream streaming show a few weeks back. I think it's still online. It's on the Bands in Town channel, uh, okay. uh, 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 Twitch or whatever. And his, the band's name is Mr. Max. Song is called Roses. His new single is called Roses. It's on Spotify. It's on some kind of playlist where he's got a, suddenly the, his plays are jumping off. There's a video on YouTube. So Mr. Max is a band. The song is called Roses. I'm totally into it. Please check it out. And yeah, I'm going to be playing with him for a while. Good, good. And it, what's happening with, yeah. with uh, playing with Dave Tweedy? All right. And yeah, so Dave, Dave's got his own thing with his uh, Dave Tweedy's doing real well down here. I don't know, Dave. Do you, Dave Scholl, Do you still talk to uh, uh, via Dave Facebook? Tweedy? You know, keeping keeping tabs on each other. Yeah. yeah. Actually, he responded to this video we were doing today. So yeah, he's doing oh Disney cool stuff. Right? Okay. So, Some he's he's rocking, man. He's Good for him. Yeah, he's Disney stuff. He's com he's he's just rocking, man. He he's uh, got built his own kind of scene down here. He does uh, soundtrack stuff. He composes for documentaries, TV shows. He produces Beautiful. all kinds of people, all kinds of different kind of music too, rock music, R&B. Um, he's really turned into like a, a hell of a um, well-rounded musician who can play yeah. keys, guitar, bass, and, and just kill, killing on drums, right. as always. And um, and so yeah, he's his one of his things is his main thing maybe is with his girlfriend Victoria, uh, who's incredible uh, keyboard player who played with Stevie Wonder for a long long time, uh, like seven eight years, uh, played with Beyonce, um, she's amazing. She's uh, East Bay too. She went to what? Skyline High and she came up in that same scene that we all did. Yeah, I remember. You, yeah. yeah, and so they got a thing called End End Spirits and. Um, uh, yeah, I've played some a few shows with them. I hope to play some more. They have a record coming out. Um, I didn't play on it, but it sounds amazing, and I would totally listen to it if I were, and I'd recommend it for anybody. And it's like R and B, good, real good R and B. I'm gonna check. Uh, and yeah, so Dave, yeah, Mr. Shul and Spirits. Yeah. What are you up to? What's happening? Well, I'm you know I'm just producing a few people here in the Bay Area. Um, I just got done co-producing with a friend of mine, a guy named Happy Sanchez, a band from the Mission District called Los Mocosos. It's sort of like Latin rock funk. They've been around for like 25 years, you know, oh, big wow. in the Latin rock Espanol scene. Um, Co-writing and playing some guitar and this guy named Cornell C.C. Carter, R&B singer. He's doing really well in Europe okay. right now. Resurgence of, of, of soul. Right, right, right. In England right now, so he's doing pretty well. So I wrote a few songs on his upcoming album that's coming out next year and just doing a bunch of sessions from home, helping folks out and doing what I could do just to stay busy. Yeah. You know. They hit you up for some crap, hey. sir. There you go. And yeah, before I forget, let me add, let me add something else. Let me let me uh 
uh, flip side. You guys know flip side, right? Yeah, Dave, you know Dave Lopez? Dave yeah. Cool? Dave's cool. That's the homie. Okay, so so anyway, Flipside's doing a bunch of stuff. I helped with a few of the tunes. I hope to be playing with them too, but check them out. I mean, I've been I hope to be working with uh I'm working with Flipside and Dave Tweedy and Spirits and Mr. Max, and that's and then I'm actually doing some stuff here on my own. I'm not working on my own solo record very slowly, but chopping away at it. I'm gonna come so there you go. Me. That's the end of my spiel. Please do. And bring That's your awesome. lingerie. I, dude, I bring so much. Who was it in that lingerie photo? Was that you? It sure wasn't pretty. You don't know about Yeah, me. that was rough. Yeah, you, you don't know about me, sir. I, you know. All right, all right, all right. Anyway. You know, I won't ask. Rick James, you know, Rick James thought he was. Whatever floats your boat. Yeah, Rick James thought he was a super freak. Wait till you see a fat man covered in tattoos and lingerie show up at your front door. And with that, right. <laughs> all right, uh, so it is just after four. So I believe, uh, so we had a little bit of a conversation, Jason and I, ahead of time. So I believe, uh, Mr. Dave Shule, uh, we had you slotted next um, for your event. So if you three want to stay on and keep chilling, or if you just want to switch it over to the Dave show, it's up to, up to you guys. I wanted to get into the spearhead situation or, yeah or at least the early bay area situation that led to that and i think orion can contribute if he has time uh yeah i'll, I'll kick it for a minute for sure and then I'll, I'll just let you guys i'd love to hear about it too actually i'd, I'd I, totally I, love to hear about dave i gotta hey, take, orion. i gotta take hey, a peek real quick so i'll be oh, right okay. back. hey orion but before you go man um let's exchange numbers because i know it's been i know we are facebook friends but people don't check that stuff so Email me your information. I'll email you. I we got I got your email through this this whole organization. Okay. So, of know? course. I'm I'm gonna kick it for a minute though, because I I will I will. But I want to hear about what you've been doing. I mean, I'm actually I'd love to hear about what you've been doing and, and like what records I could check out that you played on and all that stuff. So I'm gonna kick it for a minute and just in the background. Plus, I don't know if I can figure out how to turn all this off just yet. It'll take me a little bit. So I know this is my first session. You know. Exactly. Yeah, man. It's good to see you again. Yeah, man. I've been thinking about you, you know, I, every time I hear you on the radio. Have, thank you. Have you, do you still talk to Les? Les is the dude that to me, like just the one last thing about that, the Interstate 76 is, uh, he's like the C mo MVP of that thing. Him and Eric Valentine. Yes. The, the horns. Yes. He just, he so much writing and, and arranging of horn. Yeah. I, I'm just via Facebook, man. That's that's what that's what just keeps me in touch with people. You know, I know he has a few kids. Right. Um, we just chat. You know, just liking Got others it. each other do. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, he's I alive. I love that guy. I miss him. Yeah, but, he's alive. I, I just love that guy. He was such a quiet in the. Wait, is he wearing pants? Cut, like, cool wait, dude, is he wearing you pants? Know? You wearing pants? No, I, I roll naked at all times, sir. That's what I thought Maybe. I saw. It happens, you know. All right. Hey, let it all hang out. You really do, you know. It's freedom. Hey, Ryan. But, but I'm st I still keep in touch. I'm playing a lot with wow, Bob. Wow, man. Remember Bob Crawford? <laughs> oh, cool. Yes, I, I do. Yeah, so all these... All, it the Crawford twins? Huh? The twins, one of the twins. Yeah, I'm still hanging out with the twins. So. Yes. Yeah. So. Nice. And Rand, I think that cat Rand. I ran into Rand. I think it was in Colorado, and I just happened to be in a hotel, and he was there with him and his wife, and I invited him to the show, but he wasn't into it, so we hung out and had some drinks. So that was yeah, that was quite a surprise to see him on a fluke. But I know he's in L.A. That I do know. Nice with Rand and Randy. Yes, they're still together. All so, right. so uh, b before cool. we end up losing Orion, let's hear the history of Fungo Mungo, sir, and how all that got together and started. You don't want to hear that. That's a long, really, that's a whole rambling. You, you um, can, give us the cliff notes. You don't want to hear yeah, it. Yeah, man. Cliff notes. The cliff notes. Uh, <clears throat> uh, cliff notes are Fungo Mungo was a kind of, blowing up band on that scene then you know uh in the wake of the red hot chili peppers 
before the red before the red hot chili peppers or what everybody knows them as today like radio you know all this you guys yeah. know um before they were had songs yeah. with harmonies and like beautiful melodies they were a sort of crazy club band uh funky you know uh high energy club band and there were no there wasn't a lot of singing it was a lot of screaming and rapping yeah and um but but we loved them we loved them because the the red hot chili peppers have turned out to be so important in the modern music man they brought the melting pot a hell of a lot i i think before uh i mean in a, in a in the biggest way with anything goes punk rock jazz funk yeah. Yeah, um style rock and roll <laughs> Just every single thing. Yeah, the whole shit, rap, hip hop, the whole thing, like into the melting pot. And uh, I just got finished reading Flea's biography, which is incredible. I mean, I read it a while back, actually. But um, so yeah, so Bungo Mungo was a kind of band that was really, real big in the Red Hot Chili Peppers and sounded like it. And in the and also Primus was coming up on the Bay Area scene. Yep. And. Uh, it, they were doing pre they're pretty well they they lost their bass player they needed a bass player i was in a band that opened up for them i met the drummer jeff jeff gomes the, yeah. the lovely and talented jeff gomes and uh they said yeah we needed an audition got the gig and that's that's how it was and that's it, it. i mean it, there was more but okay you know that's that's the cliff notes yeah that's what you're comfortable talking <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Speaking about Primus, you know, I, I, so meet, I don't, yeah. Yeah. Speaking about Primus, I share um, a studio with Jay Lane, Myrtle Rehearsal Studio, recording studio. So I see his ass pretty much every other day or talk to him every day. So. Whoa. Yeah. yeah it was, it was I had, you know, so Jay That's was the in baddest my dude right there, man. Yeah. Jay was in the, in the first touring version of Snake River Conspiracy. We did a tour together. That motherfucker could play his ass off. It, it's just so funny, like, you know, he, he had come straight out of Rat Dog, uh, you Bob, told me. Bob Weir's band. And so he went from, like, hanging out with hippies to hanging out with, you know, just some freaky, you know, crazy bastards doing stupid shit. <laughs> it, it was just a very odd pairing, but one of the best drummers I've played with ever. You know, like that dude, you know, I, I, I haven't had anybody adjust – you know their time to fit mine because i always play a little behind and he just did it you know like he figured it out real quick and, and was insane just yeah he's a he's adaptable yeah actually I, I met him at this place called um casadero music camp and it was a berkeley organization it was a music camp and i just met so many people through that camp man i mean dave ellis was there jay lane was there Zoe, Zoe, Dave, Loser? okay. Jeff wow. Gomes went. Jeff, Jeff, I actually, I'm the first. Jeff Gomes went to Casadero. Yes, I actually, I'm the first one who got a uh, Dave Ellis high. I ruined him. I apologize. Good for you, sir. You know, um, <laughs> so uh, Joshua Redman was up there. Um, um, oh, wow. wait, wait. Speaking of, a lot of the baddest people from the Bay Area went to Casadero. Okay, so check this out. I learned this years later, but at Casadero, they had an amazing faculty too. So they had this class called recording. And, you know, I took the class and it was this nice English gentleman teaching it. Later on, I, you know, there was some things going on. Luckily, he played with Stevie Wonder, did some shit like that, even though I was a Stevie Wonder fan, but I wasn't really in the liner notes back then, really. I think I was 12 or 13. But I knew all Stevie's shit, you know, I had all his records, but it ended up being Malcolm Cecil. Oh, shit. Have you heard of this cat? Hell yeah. Whoa. He did all this, all the yeah, synthesizer man. programming for, uh, yeah, he was heavy as fuck. All of those records. Um, so I was in the key of life and, and, um, at, at Eric at, studio, at Eric Valentine's studio. Wow. So that's right. So, so anyway, that was the last, the last couple of days out. When you, yeah, oh, when you okay, that shit. That shit. But the thing was, I mean, this kid, this guy, you know, was large. All right. Teaching a bunch of fucking kids, inner city kids, how to record. Far out. Yeah. I learned that years later. Yeah. Amazing. That was cool. Very cool. Very cool. But yeah, a lot of people went to that camp, man. I'm surprised you All didn't right, go there. All right, man. But you're out? I went to another 
I went to another camp. Oh, yeah, I'll let you do your thing. I went to another camp that wasn't as heavy as music. I didn't even know about Casadero, but it's a dope place. I actually, uh, a friend of mine a te- a does taiko drums there. And a couple of years back, I went and helped her for a few days. Uh, Ray Till Peter, who records and yeah. produces flip side, he now That's does that fun. recording class that Malcolm did. Wow. He's now the recording guy there. So it's all the Bay Area, man. It's a circle of, you know, it's just not. It's a it's a small world, really. Yeah. And before I go, is there any way I can see that um, lingerie picture again? Uh, you, you know, I mean, I got another piece here. I could throw, uh, you know, something. But somebody put that picture up. Make it work. They just call me Panty Man, sir. All right. Okay, I got this going, man. All right, all right. Looks nice. You know, Thank you. <laughs> I, believe, I, believe. I love you guys. Thank you so much, Orion. Uh, Before you leave, I want to let you know, we did have another donation come in. Um, So we wanted to thank you to Amanda for donating in her friend's memory, um, who actually just uh, passed away from cancer last week. So thank you, Amanda. Sorry, Amanda. Oh, my God. Thank you, Amanda. Thanks, Thanks, Amanda. Cheers. I love you, brother. Nice meeting you. Uh, All right. Love you guys. Good seeing you, Dave. Yes, man. Let's stay in touch, bro. Take care. Out. All right, so so I will take care, y'all. Bye. Okay. Bye. All right, so so spearhead, and how did that start for you? Well, how did that start? I used to uh, manage because my good friend Happy Sanchez, he owns the biggest rehearsal studio in San Francisco. Yeah, I know Happy. It's called um, Secret Studios. Don't tell anyone. Yeah, it's a secret. I also got to kill you. <laughs> but anyway, he's 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 not he's the He's the band lord of the Bay Area. Yep. A landlord, but a band lord. Um, anyway, I was managing that this place for a while. And at the time I was working, a bunch of guitar players started coming through. They go, hey, man, where's Spearhead's room? I said, oh, it's, it's down the hall. Make a left, blah, blah, whatever. Another one comes. I said, where'd you come from? Because he, he got out of a cab with his luggage. Oh, I came from Philly. Oh, OK. Another guy from LA. I guess they were had auditions or something. So Happy knew Michael, and he goes, yo, man, why don't you check out my bro Dave? You know, he works at the front office, man. He's pretty funky. You know, at least he thought so. Um, so then he goes, yeah, man, you know, you know, because at, at that time, they were like a, a black militant band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the no. early. Right. So, you know. I shouldn't even say this, but um, whatever. They, they go, oh, man, we're only looking for brothers. And I go, you know, happy told me. I said, oh, that's cool. I, I totally get it, you know? So at the time, they couldn't, after they couldn't find anybody. So they had a tour to um, Australia and New Zealand. And I guess they couldn't find anyone. So they, they gave me a shot. And, you know, that I, I said, hey, all right. So they hired me. I did the audition. They hired me and, and I got the gig. And a few days later, first show was at the Showbox in Seattle. I know the gig. Fucking sold out. It's like, wow. I didn't know these guys were as big as they are. You know, it was, it was sort of like a cult following. And then the next trip was New Zealand. And it's like we played this festival called the Byron Bay Blues Festival, you know, in front of like 20,000 people, my second show. Oh, shit. And yeah, because they were huge in Australia. So that's how I got in the gig. And that was the tail end of a record they did called Chocolate Super Highway, which I was not involved, but they were, had to do a few right. tours. After that. So they lost a guitar player. He just wanted, he was tired of being on the road. A guy named David James, and he you know, wants to spend time with his family, you know, because they're on the road nine months out of the year. So then the next, they did the next, I started doing the next record, and I got involved, obviously playing and writing a few tunes. Um, that was called Stay Human. And apparently, it, no, it, actually, it did got rave reviews from like Rolling Stones and all, Rolling Stone magazine and all the major magazines as a very influential album of that year, which I don't remember what year it was. Maybe uh, 98, 99 or something like that. Wow. So you, you were there. When, when did you leave? 2011. Wow. 2011. I had yeah. no idea you were there that long. Yeah, about 13, 14 years. A pretty amazing experience, though. You must have seen everything in the world. Uh, you know, you see a lot, and then you see very little. 
Yeah. You know? You know, it's that you thing. Know. It's you see the bus, you, you see the hotel. The yeah. You get off the tour bus, go shit, shower, and shave, go find something to eat, and go to sound check, and then get on the bus, do it all over again. Yeah, yeah that's what killed me. That's that's yeah. that's what wore me out was was you know, I think my final one was like it was an over two year tour. You know, I came home for Christmas. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I came home for some holidays and, and a couple birthdays and things. Uh, and it, I, you know, I was done. I was so burnt by the end of that. I, I was finished. Uh, yeah. You know, like it just became obvious. Like this, it, this is not how I want to spend my life. Yeah, it's definitely uh, a hard life. Two years, man. That's a long time. I mean, especially it, a few days. Time. Crazy. Oh. Because what kept happening was just it kept getting extended. So it was like we 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 would jump from one tour to another tour as, as openers. Uh, so so it really was that you know it was like we we would end up like okay we're in you know bumfuck wherever we're gonna sit here for four days uh, and stay in the bus uh, right. until okay. this band comes through and then we'll just start opening up for these other guys and it wow. just kept going that way it it, it was I, I there's times I thought I was gonna die <laughs> just just too tired to keep doing it. Well, fortunately, the longest we ever went was uh, like eight weeks, and that was rare. So, I mean, we were a little older, you know. We yeah, yeah. Kids, but, when you yeah. guys were making money, like you know, we weren't. We we were we were you know, just trying to keep the bus and the bus driver paid. <laughs> you know, right. nobody. Well, nobody. You know, we made our money being on the road. So, I mean, you know, records. We didn't really sell that many records per se. You know? Yeah. So. Right, and then yeah. after stage two album i got you know me and michael you know had a great writing relationship so i got to write co-wrote all the songs on this other album called uh everyone deserves music i think there's 10 or 12 songs on that record and that was that's actually what i heard was that's the most successful record they ever did wow as far as yeah i mean you know I, I liked the later stuff i didn't like the early stuff you know, oh, like okay. when they first came out and were on their thing, it was like, eh. right. I don't know, you know, like. Well, they're on a whole other direction, you know, which, you know, I'm still yeah. friends with all the guys, but they're on a whole other. It, it, it seemed uh, like, he was, it seemed like he was earnest anyways, you know, like it, up, up to whatever point. Uh, you know, I, I think I met him twice and yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Um, but you know, he tried hard and he, you know, did a lot of stuff. Well, he's still, still doing it. They're, well, not now, but, you know, they're still doing it. They're yeah. Doing it. But like I said, all the guys are still in the, every musician that's been in that band, we're all homies, you know? A yeah. lot of people, man, I, I think I counted one time, it's like 110 people have been in that band since I was in it. So. You're or, uh, band and crew. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, 110. But I'm, um, you have me beat. <laughs> well, I'm, not 100, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit. A lot. A lot. And at one time, you know, after I left, it's funny because the Bay Area, because we were talking with Orion, how, how this, it's just a small circle of people in the Bay Area. Because, you know, now I'm a guitar whore. I play, play you know, yeah, when you play. I had to right. play with anybody to try to make a living. So at one point in one week, I had three separate gigs with three different keyboard players who were in that camp. Wow. Yeah. Far out. So I just got a message that we got to wrap this up because I guess whatever the time limit is, is okay. wound down. Well, we've been going for, since three o'clock. So it's been a good hour and a half. Say, yeah. Yeah. You guys have been going for a bit. So, and it looks like uh, for most of the people that were on the Zoom call um, have started to drop off. So I think it's just us now. Um, okay. But it was... It was good hanging out and and getting to hear you guys just kind of tell stories and catch up. So, hey, we gotta we gotta work on something soon, bro. Yes, let's do it, man. You got my number. I got your number. Yep, let's do. I'll and, wear some laundry. Thanks for thanks for helping out with this. Oh, thank you. It's just, I'm not doing anything anyway today, you know, except walking my dog. There right on par. I appreciate you, man. Thanks. Nice meeting you too, man. Yeah, nice meeting you. Thank you so much for helping out with this, man. All right, All guys. Right. We'll see each other soon. Yeah. Thank you guys. Take care, man. Peace. Yep. Have a good night. Bye.